This should not exist, let's be honest. But today we're giving it a reason to. So today we're making the Taco Bell nacho fries. Wow, everybody's like, oh my God, the nacho fries are back. And then Taco Bell's like, damn, our margin's looking pretty good right now. All we gotta do is fry some taters and use the nacho cheese sauce we've been using for 62 years. Pfft, this is why. Now, if there was a Taco Bell grande version, maybe I would be more excited about it. But as of now, there's not. But if we win, we'll make one. So that being said, let's make this, shall we? Wow, 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 we're back at the KFC Taco Bell combo and it just says now. We've rated this before, I don't remember what it was. The exterior, two out of 10, because I don't like that it's a combo. If that changed, then I'm sorry. Menu, the consistency's been good, so four out of 10. Service, let's find out. Hi, uh, can, Hi. I, can I just get the two orders of the nacho fries? Thank you. I'll give it a five out of 10. Thank you. She was very nice. She was smiling through her mask. You know what, nine out of 10. It's towards the end of the day, probably tired and she's still kicking it. Taco Bell, wow, big step up. All right, well, can't wait to poop. So we got the, I know it seems confusing. All right, fries from any fast food place are probably gonna be decent. They smell nice. They look pretty normal. This whole craze about this. I'm so confused. There are some flavors that I'm kind of liking. They're a little dulled and out of nowhere, there's just like this sweetness. I don't understand. Totally ruined the fry. They were on a good track record. I was about to be like, these aren't bad. I feel like they mixed the salt with the sugar by accident. What the f happened? Then there's this. Oh, I hate this type of cheese sauce. I like queso, real queso, like from Texas. This is an abomination. Guess I'll eat it. It works. I'll give these a three out of 10. It's okay. All the hype, not worth it. So why don't we make something worth the hype? Right, let's make this simple and easy. It seems to be that these are lightly battered, seasoned fries. You'll need two pounds or 900 grams of russet potatoes. Wash them, peel them, cut them into half inch matchsticks, which is a lot easier if you have one of these things. Granted, it's kind of a waste of money unless you plan on making a lot of fries. I don't, but uh, I guess I like wasting money. I don't know. Link in description if you want the one I'm using. Once it's done, get yourself a large pot filled with water, season it generously with salt, bring it to a boil, add in your potatoes, and pull them from the boil just before they're cooked through. You'll then be slightly softened on the outside, but still crunchy on the inside. So for a half inch matchstick, it's about three to five minutes. Pull those, let them drain on a paper towel, pop them into the fridge on a sheet tray till completely cold and dry. Now while those are becoming very chilly, let's make our nacho dip. Get a medium sauce pot and add two tablespoons or 28 grams of unsalted butter. Heat over medium. Once melted, whisk in two tablespoons or 15 grams of all-purpose flour. Let the cook stirring often for about 45 seconds and congratulations, you have a roux. Now add in two tablespoons or 30 grams of heavy cream and one cup or 240 milliliters of whole milk. Whisk together till heated and beginning to thicken and look sometimes it gets a little too thick no worries you can always thin it out with papa's milk so once you've got a nice sort of bechamel going on you're gonna add one teaspoon or three grams of fresh ground black pepper half a teaspoon or one gram of ground cumin half a teaspoon or one gram of ground cayenne a small pinch of smoked paprika whisk it together till combined then add your fromage which is gonna be four ounces or 113 grams of grated american cheese for nostalgia four ounces or 113 grams of cheddar cheese whisk till completely melted adding extra milk to thin if needed and then finally two ounces or 57 grams of grated gruyere cheese. Again, whisk until smooth, glossy, and luxurious. Season and taste with salt. I added a small pinch of Dorito powder from the Doritos Locos Taco video because I can and nobody can stop me. Link in the description for that. And that right there is a lovely nacho cheese sauce that not only you can feel good about, but maybe, dare I say, fancy. Right, back to the taters. They should be cold. If they're not, cool, go do something else until they are. Which, by the way, you can totally do this chilling part a day or two ahead of time, which is awesome. Prep it, put it in the fridge, beautiful. But let's say you're ready and they're cold. So now we make our fry batter. In a large bowl, combine one cup or 150 grams of all-purpose flour, one and a half teaspoons or eight grams of fine sea salt, optionally a quarter teaspoon or one gram of MSG. Two teaspoons or six grams of smoked paprika, half a teaspoon or one gram of onion powder, half a teaspoon or one gram of ground cumin, <coughs> cumin, one teaspoon or three grams of garlic powder, half a teaspoon or one gram of cayenne. Give that a good old fashioned whisk. And then whisk in three quarters of a cup or 180 milliliters of cold water. Whisk until completely smooth. And if it's too thick, then keep adding water until it's a relatively loose batter. Now it should be thick enough to coat and cling to the fry, but when you pull the fry out, the majority of it should drain off with just a thin veneer. 
left on. Now hold your god dang horses. You can't go dunking them tubers without your fry seasoning. So in a small bowl, combine one and a half tablespoons or 13 grams of cheddar cheese powder, two teaspoons or 10 grams of mushroom soup base powder, which you can get at most Asian markets, two teaspoons or six grams of smoked paprika, half a teaspoon or one gram of ground cumin, one teaspoon or three grams of garlic powder. Mix that together, then realize that you forgot the salt, so add one and a half teaspoons or seven grams of kosher salt. Whisk, and you have a nice fry guy on the fly. Okay, we're nearly there. Get a large heavy bottom pot, fill about halfway with vegetable oil, heat it to 350 Fahrenheit, then in batches, gently dunk your fries in the batter, drain them on a wire rack set over a baking sheet to get the excess batter off, and then in batches, gently lay them into your oil and fry for about three to five minutes until beautifully golden browned crisp spears of potato heaven emerge, anointed with shimmering oil from the fry gods. Pop those onto a clean wire rack set over a baking sheet and immediately season with your fry spice, generously, of course, while the potatoes are still hot. Don't be one of those, oh, I'll do it a little later, people. Because your seasoning will not stick. Now, all you need to do is pour yourself a nice little ramekin, or a big ramekin, who cares? Fill that up with your cheese, you got your fries, you get to dipping, and that's it. But wait, we have an important note before we taste. Papa, what about a Bel Grande version? Oh, my children. I've never forgotten. Once you have your fries and your nacho dip, you're pretty much good to go to make a Bel Grande version, which Taco Bell has yet to offer. So simply make a mayo sauce consisting of one cup or 200 grams of mayo, three tablespoons or 45 grams of Valentino's hot sauce, one teaspoon or three grams of ancho powder, one teaspoon or three grams of garlic powder, salt to taste, pepper, mix, lovely. And now to assemble, get yourself a bowl, fries down first, then your nacho sauce as much as you like, a nice mound of cooked ground beef, which you can use the ground beef for my Doritos Locos video, a lovely dollop of sour cream, a nice array of your spiced mayo dotted all over over, diced tomatoes, diced avocado, which again, for some reason, half the production crew does not like. Please roast them in the comments. Anyway, cilantro leaves to garnish a nice sprinkling of your fry spice on your sour cream. Why not? Looks nice. And optionally, some crumbled cotija cheese to finish it off. And I'll tell you what, brother, that makes my bel grande, if you know what I mean. Anyway, this is the bel grande version of the fries, which Taco Bell hasn't offered yet, so now we are. But let's finally see who really won this but better. Made fries, dip them. That's gonna be hot. I was hoping it would drip, it did just like made a stalagmite. Oh, f <laughs> You know, sometimes it's not always about just making it better. Sometimes it's about making it right. Making it what it should have been. Making it what they wanted it to be. It just ever so escaped their grasp. You're welcome. This is a proper seasoned fry with a nacho cheese sauce made with a proper roux. This is a Mornay sauce. This is fine dining, but brought into the commercial world. It's a dub. Pano, step in. Taste test, please. Woo! So Pano, what's your favorite color? A light tan. Interesting, okay. Do you like nacho fries? I've had them once and they were okay. I thought they were a little bit disappointing, but still like I was munching on them. Okay, cool. Number one. I'm so sexy. That's number right. one. Number two, choo-choo. Mm. The second one obviously is infinitely better. Most, I think the sauce like takes it into a different stratosphere. But the craziest thing to me is that your fry tastes more like Taco Bell than Taco Bell's. The seasoning tastes like a mixture of like Doritos, but with like nachos and what I assume the beef. It's a totally different spice that they put on these. Like the only reason why it's a nacho fry is because of the cheese, which also got decimated by that. That was bananas. Not only are we the winner, it doesn't stop there. In fact, this never stops. You don't have to wait for Taco Bell to come out with this mm -hmm. and be sort of disappointed. You can have these year round. But you wanna know what else you can have year round? 